What is more important than your only son's 18th birthday? Wishing you a very happy birthday and many, many more. There's no party. Going out your birthday uh, cake candles and it's not you. Every once in a while, you know, girlfriends of mine will have their birthday parties. And we are going to give mom the best birthday surprise ever. Are you ready to rock? Damn it, now listen to me. I'm older and I'm wise. Happy 229th birthday. Ready to go for the podcast. Hey, everybody, it's Steve McCoy, Vicky Locke, and Tony Ragu in his movie review. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> My husband, Mike, he's joining us. He's replacing Tom Sullivan for the day because yeah. Tom has uh, bigger names to play with. <laughs> he's got I a guess. photo shoot. He had a photo <laughs> shoot, he told me, and all of his whole day is packed with stuff. So. So he couldn't, he, is, he couldn't be here for your birthday. I know. Well, easy way for him to skip out on a lunch, isn't it? He's such a dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We love you, Tommy. Yeah. GB. But so. should we start with your birthday? Because I, I made something special. Maybe we should get that out of the way. Okay, we'll talk all about right. Your trip sure. to D.C. for the Parkinson's yeah. Foundation. Yeah. And, uh, uh, okay, so close your eyes. Okay. And just listen. Put right. something together, Tom and I. And Mike, for your All birthday, right. are you ready? All right. Okay. All right. Oh. That's real sweet, Vic. Thank you. A little One teddy more time. bear. Oh, it sings Happy again. Happy birthday to you. Keep mm. it going. Mm. Mm. That's real nice. Okay, now, how do I shut this off, Vic? Happy birthday. I think I can fix this. You can? All right, please fix it. Yeah, let me, let me, the, uh, ooh, 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 ooh. The bear! Ooh, nice shot, Mike. Ooh, ooh, AK-47. Oh, I have no idea why you don't have me. Easy. I thought you were just glad to see me. <laughs> Wait till the smoke clears. All right, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Another great birthday gift from Vicki Locke, everybody. Thank you very much. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so what else uh, do we have? How old are you, by the way? Uh, 60, um, oops, just in time. Uh, There it came in. Hmm. All right. Ooh, ooh, Mike. I totally got this. This podcast rated X. Yeah. (laughs) Or MA for mature audiences. (laughs) Wow. Thank you very much. All right. Very nice. Very nice. All right. We got that out of the way. The bit of the day out of the way. (laughs) (laughs) So everybody, if you didn't know, Steve McCoy went to Washington, D.C. recently. Now, did you actually speak before Congress? Tell us everything. Yeah. Capitol Hill. Okay. We went to Capitol Hill on Tuesday last week. A uh, week ago yesterday, beautiful day in Washington, it was 68 degrees, a lot of protesters outside because it was the day that Trump was going to make his speech to Congress that night. So there were a lot of Fox uh, News was in, CNN, everybody was in Rotunda there setting up. And I saw Shepard Smith, who we've had on the show before, so I went over to speak to him. Well, they stopped me right there and then. They stopped me. They said, where do you think you're going? I said, I'm going over to see Shepard Smith. I kind of know him. And they said, well, you're not with Fox News, right? I said, no, I'm with the media, though. This, I'm with Michael J. Fox right now, though, and blah, blah, blah. Everything was so tightly secured there. Is this so, fake news, Steve, or are you yeah, telling the truth? No, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> telling the truth there. It's not <laughs> fake news. But CNN was there. I saw Jake Tapper and all that and all the people that you see on TV setting up. But um, that was it. Uh, the other congressman, John Lewis, was very nice. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is. He is. So your objective basically was try to get more funding for Parkinson's? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we made some headway this year as opposed to last year. Met Parkinson's. Michael J. Fox? Mm-hmm. He was there. Came uh, Tuesday morning to our breakfast. Spoke to everybody. Because he was at the Oscars. Yeah, two so days he, earlier. Yeah. Yeah, he flew in and he stayed the next night. On a hoverboard? Hotel. No, <laughs> didn't. I met him on Noonday when I did Noonday. He came by. It was long ago. And he asked about Tony Ragu, I'm sure. Oh, he did, yeah. He yeah. said, Where's Tony? how's Tony doing? How's Tony Ragu in his movie review? <laughs> so anyway, but uh, yeah, Mike Hughes used to do Tony Ragu on the show, for those of you that may recall, back in the early 90s on Star 94. Oh, you're giving about away my secret. Years. Well, I know. So go ahead. Have you seen any movies recently, Tony? <laughs> Tony has seen a few movies. I went to see Shaq. Yeah? Yeah. Hey, I thought it was a movie about Shaq, the basketball guy. Oh, no, no, no. 
<laughs> Who knew that Octavia? What's her name? Octavia? Octavia? Octavia Spencer? She's Octavia not even Spencer. Italian. She's yeah. a black god, though. <laughs> Am I ruining it for you? Forget yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one I did not see. I did see uh, Logan, though. We did, too. That's pretty good. Yes. I like those movies. They just... No more, though, I guess. No more. Says he's not going to do any more. That little mm-hmm. girl was... She was awesome. Bad. She was a great bad actress. Ass. I can't say I know. Yeah, she was bad. Uh, yeah, she was. Yeah. I, she, who's, she was flying around like... I man. Know. Good little actress, too. Yeah, I, I like don't know her. who yeah. she was. In an interview, uh, I think Hugh Jackman was saying that she was just so nice and nice and polite, have lunch, <laughs> and she'd be playing with her dolls or whatever, just like a normal little girl, and then on set... Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, kicking ass. Start yeah. killing people. Yeah, nice. that's really good. Really good movie theaters. What else? I saw the uh, one with uh, Matt Damon, The Great Wall, or The Wall. Oh, uh, yeah. You what does Tony that? Ragu say about that? It was Gag Factor 10 for Tony. I just didn't, th- I didn't get the whole thing. I mean, I know what it was supposed to be, but why Matt Damon? Because I guess he's a big name to sell the movie. Yeah. But he but, played the role pretty good, you don't think? You know, you didn't yeah. buy this. You didn't he should have lit up his woman general. He should have tuned her up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we needed some gratuitous sex there. Yeah. That didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> his buddy was a little too glib, though, I thought. Yeah. yeah. He said when he was outside the room and they were talking about him, he goes, I can hear you. I thought, that's not, that yeah. doesn't play well. In there were a couple of lines that century. were so, yes, exactly. Too goofy. Yeah, too goofy. But um, not bad, but you guys didn't like it. All right, well, let's see what else. Um, Did you watch Feud on FX, the story of Betty Davis and Joan Crawford? No, is that on yet? Yeah, Yeah. yes. Sunday, last Sunday was the first episode, and I I know a lot of our audience probably doesn't even know Mm, whatever happened to Baby Jane, what that is. I didn't realize it was a book, one. I didn't realize a lot of things that they really did absolutely hate each other. Oh, yeah, I knew that. And it's I'm I'm hooked. It is a great. It's on FX Sunday nights, but you can see it on demand. It's excellent. Yeah, it's it, you know the true story behind some of that stuff is is really uh, um, it's interesting and and how you know the little things that they would do to fight each other. Like one was married to the president of Pepsi Cola, and the other one said, "Hey, you know." If, that's fine. So she's going to put a Coke machine in her room, yeah, <laughs> you know, just yeah. kind of, you know, and then when they had a scene where she had to actually kick her, she literally kicked her and apparently has given her three stitches. Don't quote me exactly on that, but I, I thought I read that somewhere where she actually booted her in the head for real oh and God. gave her three stitches. And she was like, she did that intentionally. Well, duh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They only did two movies together, though, right? Not sure. Um, I think, think whatever happened to Baby Jane, and there was another one that was like that. Yeah, another mystery one that I think mm. they did. But just how nobody wanted to do the film, really? and the, the director is begging and just begging, and they didn't really have a great reputation. The did two you ever women. See the original. Yeah, I know I did, but I want to see it now again. Yeah, you'd have to go see it because again. because according to this, the whole. Do you remember Betty Davis? She the way she painted her face yeah. and the wig that was all her idea that she, she would thinking. go the extra mile. She didn't care about looking ugly or she would put herself out there. That's why yeah. uh, directors loved her. Where Joan was more insecure and wanted to be pretty and loved. And mm-hmm. it's great if you're into old movies. If you're not, you've already tuned out and you haven't been listening. Let's get <laughs> back to the teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me reload. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A lot of bullet shells on my floor here now. Another yeah. thing people might not remember, if you if you recall, when we would travel together, Steve's wife, myself, our spouses, it would always, always happen where Steve and Mike would go to the bathroom together, usually before we boarded a plane, and you would always come out of the bathroom laughing uproariously. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. And it was yeah. all be, it was all bathroom humor, right? Absolutely. So tell tell everybody some stories. Oh god, where do you begin? Well, I remember the first time, that was the first time I ever heard anybody fart in a bathroom. A guy fart was when I was with Mike like in my 20s or the something. The first time ever? <laughs> yeah. I think so, where, really. Cuz this guy farted Where you been really going to pee in the backyard? I, don't know, I guess. <laughs> no, I guess in Buffalo they didn't fart in the bathroom. I don't know. Never heard anybody do that. So these two would walk out and just <laughs> 
Well, you have to admit, bathroom humor is kind of funny. And yeah. then you go in there, and some guys, like, lighten it up, and then you start snickering. Yeah. And then, you know, another one's, like, passing gas. Yeah. And, of course, you come yeah. out of there howling. Yeah. How can you not? Yeah, pretty funny. Pretty funny times. <laughs> Good times. Good oh, times, yeah. 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 <laughs> so let's see. Want to talk about politics or just put it aside? And oh, not... come on. Let's have fun today. All right. Let's not talk about Donald Trump or anything that's going on there. Wait, I have to send out a Twitter thing about Donald right now. <laughs> yeah. This very minute. Can he, yeah. pl- not to get into it, but can he just please shut up? I know. Please shut up and run the country. I couldn't believe when he tweeted all about Obama and then in the middle of that tweeted about uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger losing his job on The Apprentice. Because like, he didn't have ratings. That's yeah, right. God, that guy is such a... He needs his... his. Uh, you know how every president has their own appointed doctor, yeah. right? His doctor should go in there and put his hands in casts so he can't fiddle <laughs> with phones and buttons and tweets yeah. and things and, until it's, you know, until somebody can, like, monitor his mouth. Okay, so we've had our first tantrum. <laughs> I think he's probably put the law down about this Twitter account. That uh, nobody can touch him when he's on it. uh, (laughs) It's crazy. Craziness. Wild man. Um, As you know, we have this uh, little chandelier type thing, small chandelier that's over our kitchen table. And, and, you know, these chandeliers have these little plastic... Um, white covers that are, you know, a few inches tall, whatever. Anyway, so as it, as they age, they chip because the heat dries them up a little bit, so they crack. Right, right. You know, no big deal. And uh, so uh, Vicky goes, I'd, I'd like that replaced. Okay, fine. So off I go to the, you know, Home Depot has them. Lord loves a working man. Don't trust Whitey. See a doctor and get rid of it. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're pretty cheap. They're only a couple bucks. Uh But in order to cut them, you know, you have to cut them to size. Mm -hmm. And so to cut them, you need certain tools, of which I did not have. So I said, so what are you going to go get? Which I didn't want to spend a boatload of money on because Mm -hmm. it's a tool that you're probably not going to use once. And I'm working on little pieces of plastic that are only a couple dollars. So why go spend, you know, 20 or 25 bucks on a tool that, you know, if push came to shove, I'd have to replace these little tubes and do a little bit better job with with like an X-Acto knife. Yeah. But I opted for the tool if I could find it cheaply. And? So... Um, I was informed the best place to go is is Michael's. So Michael should be a sponsor. You can reach me at. Um, so I go into Michael's and I go. I need a um, uh, you know a razor saw is what it's called. Uh-huh. I need a razor saw. Uh-huh. They go. Oh well, right over here in aisle five. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she takes me over there, and sure enough, here is a razor saw with a very small mini miter box. I go, oh, this is perfect. I go, how much? Again, this is Chinese to me. <laughs> I go, how much? You know, I didn't want to spend a whole buck. She goes, it's on sale for three dollars. I go, three dollars. <laughs> oh, four of them. God, four of them. Yeah. yeah. And I go, well, do you happen to have a three quarter inch dowel rod? You know, just something to put this cover over the top. Sure. Again, Chinese dowel rod. So <laughs> she goes, I have one. Does it matter what length? I go, yeah. I don't want one that's eight feet. You know, I don't. Yeah. Need, I just need a you know six inch piece of dowel rod. She goes, here's one. It's about three feet. How about a dollar thirty nine? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I love you. Forget that little blue pill. Go to Home Depot. Get a dowel. <laughs> Rod. No, go to Michaels, Michaels. Michaels. or Michaels, Michaels. Yeah. whatever. So I walk out of there with a. Where's uh, the gun? I want to make him stop. <laughs> so I walk out of there with a razor saw, a miter box, and a dowel rod for a grand total. Hallelujah! Of four dollars and ninety cents. <laughs> That's a great find, bud. It was incredible. Yeah, but you don't hear screaming because I fixed their little chandelier things. Mike, tool time, huge. That's yeah. right. What's a miter box fix? Do you know? What no. Do you <laughs> well, she I does called now. it a meter box forever, but I practiced so I can tell the story correctly on the the podcast. It's a miter box. It's a little thing that has <laughs> slits in it, it's right? A, yeah, it's a Angles. guide yeah. for cutting. Again, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you know how I feel when I go to like, you know, Sephora or whatever. Have you ever heard of Voo skincare? Oh my gosh, they have this oil that. Drink it, it's called Voo, not Voo. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, today's March the 8th. We're uh, doing this podcast on, you'll hear it in a couple of days on Friday, but uh, we're doing it on Wednesday, March the 8th, which is International Women's Day. Always falls on my birthday. And it's also a new uh, day. I woke up this morning to the today's show. No, I missed all that. It's yeah, like a what day would, without women. A day without women. Yeah, yeah. that's what it's called. And so I you can, two are celebrating. I right? can use that right about now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but here's a birthday card that's perfect. Oh, thank you, thank you. Read this card because okay. I always look for cards that are just so perfect, suitable yeah, for and perfect person. for Steve's personality, and I think this will fit the bill. Don't you think? Oh yeah, Steve. And yeah. especially when they were just talking about the bathroom humor, it goes along with one of. His favorite okay. all-time TV shows. Mm. Hmm. I can't hold her, Captain. She's breaking wind. She's breaking wind. Oh, it's a bunch of Star Trek. It's Mr. Spock. Is great for exfoliating your skin. Oh, good. You- and uh, Scotty and uh, Kirk, <laughs> make it your mission to let loose and enjoy your birthday. <laughs> very nice. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. You just go ahead and card. let loose, Steve-O. Ooh, there's a little gift in here. Oh, a gift card. Oh, geez. Thanks very much. Shouldn't have done that. Jeez, thank you very much. Well, nice you guys. only turned 40 once. Yeah, I know. That's mm-hmm. right. Fart Trek. Fart Trek, it says on it. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect, see? I'm a disc jockey. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> I was trying to think, Steve and I, when we were on Star 94 back in the day, we used to Uh-oh. surprise each other, each other with special celebrity guests. Oh, yeah. That, and I'll never forget, I've, I just told this story the other day to show you how political radio is and was. His favorite, favorite, favorite person on the planet was, and I believe still is, Paul McCartney. Yeah. So I can't remember what birthday it was, but I'm talking to the record rep and I'm saying, just, can, is there any way he can just call in and and say happy birthday to Steve? And he's like, add the record. I don't know what song he had out. Hmm. I'm like, I, I can't do that. You know, right, the, right. the music director, the program director can do that. I can't do it that. Mall but, of Kintyre or something. So Mall of Kintyre was it, it took how many years before we, we finally got a chance to interview him? But it was oh, just they had nothing impossible. to do with our birthdays either. No, right. Yeah. I couldn't get it done. Yeah. It just wouldn't happen. Yeah. I tried to get Oprah for you because you loved Oprah so much. And Mike even sent her a bunch of flowers, and I sent her flowers. And Oprah's that, dead to me. That didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, she's running. she says she's going to run for president in 2020. She's so, not. She said no. She said no? Yes. I read she said yes. No. Oh. That's your reading the fake news yeah, again. Must, you got to stop reading the, 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 the Enquirer, Steve. I know. I know. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> All right. But uh, anyway, so uh, I tried to get Oprah to call in on her birthday, but we did get a bunch of celebs. She played that. She's tall and blonde, and I think you'll agree, she's the best-dressed woman on the nightly E.T. So this listener here on hold guessed who it was, right? Yep, we got a winner. All right. My name is Terry. I'm from Riverdale. You watch her on TV every night, Steve. You know who she is? That's right. Terry's won a pair of tickets to see Mad Dog and Glory at any theater that she cares to. Now, Steve, go ahead and guess. Go ahead and guess. Someone. Well, uh, first of all, I'm so impressed that I've got uh, that I have the hotline number and that I got through direct. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is just um, I don't know, uh, you know who who should be on a big ego trip about that. I'm very impressed with myself. Not too many people get the hotline number, Lisa. Well, I guess so. Lisa Gibbons. Well, you said her name. <laughs> oh shit! Vicky <laughs> <laughs> <Really? laughs> <Mickey> Lock. <laughs> I'm sitting here. <laughs> I'm sitting here going through my mind. Okay, okay. Someone I watch. You're probably you're thinking, ooh, Tabitha Soren. Ooh, who is it? Oh, oh geez. Good work, Steve. Yeah, well, you know, Lisa Gibbons. Wow, what a thrill. So, um, see, this is one of those questions, those gratuitous sort of Barbara Walters type questions about, you know, how does it feel and... And if you, you know, those kinds of things. Are you going through some sort of an emotional trauma? <laughs> <laughs> are you uh, are you admitting to your real age or have you started leveling the years? That's what everybody out here does. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, people I started to work with 10 years ago are now younger than me. And they were, you know, <laughs> older than me at the beginning. That's right. That's how it goes, right? They just sort of catch up. Well, they, I think there are all kinds of new studies out there, too, that, um, you know, we used to think that men reached their peak in, in, when they were like 17. And well, I did. I think they've refuted that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Have you been talking to my wife? Because 
<laughs> it was about 17, as I recall. Well, you know, now here's something that's going to be interesting, something you, I'm sure, do not know. But way back when, when you and I were both very young, um, I was in Spartanburg, South Carolina doing mornings. It was the first place I ever got a morning job. And you were on a television station uh, there. My gosh. That was my very first TV job. Was it really? Yes. WSPA-TV. I That's remember right. you. I was so pitiful. They used to do five-minute cut-ins, you know. We would do the updates at five minutes, and I had to produce the news. And I one day I had, like, two minutes worth of news, and that was it. Mm -hmm. So I just signed off. Mm -hmm. And they played the theme music over me sitting there shuffling my script for three <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Lisa. We'll be right back with more of The Birthday Show. Star 94. I'll we'll tell you why in 15 minutes on Star 94. This is Michael Lomax, chairman of the Board of Commissioners of Fulton County and former win, lose, and draw partner of oh. Steve McCoy, yeah. wishing him a happy birthday and challenging him to another tennis match in 1993. I beat you last year, Steve, when you were a year younger. I can beat you again this year. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. 619, Star 94. Steve McCoy's birthday! Good morning, this is Rich Sale. I'm calling from Austell, and I know the winner. But I'll bet you you don't, Steve. Yeah? And you better watch out, because he and his buddies are a whole lot bigger than you. Jerry Glanville? Yes! <laughs> All right! <laughs> How did you guess that? I just I know your voice. What's amazing to me is that you has celebrated another birthday, you know? you got socks older than most of your listeners. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're on page 106 of the Bible. <laughs> yeah, you and Travis Tritt. I know those two voices anywhere. Uh, that, that shocked me that you knew who I was because I was trying my best to disguise it and sound like somebody that... Uh, uh, you wouldn't like, and I know I'm your I'm your biggest fan, and uh, <laughs> you're mine. Oh wow, this is cool. <laughs> well, we wanted you to give him one of your uh, belt buckles. That's what Steve's really been asking for and bugging us for his birthday. Well, really, uh, the belt buckle, the way I wear it, uh, makes you bulletproof from the front. But the way Steve would wear it, he'd be, be protecting his backside because he turns everything around. You know. <laughs> hey, I'm not as bad as some of those sports writers that write stuff about you from time to time, huh? Well, you know, we're we're entitled to one good article a year, and unfortunately we're about six years behind. <laughs> How is your uh, lovely wife Brenda? She's great. She appreciates all the, you know, when, when it's crunch time and she needs help in a charity event and when it's time that, you know, uh, all Mark has got to be called in, you're always the best, and she loves you for that. that uh, Brenda's a lovely woman. I don't know how she puts up with you. Well, she she wasn't sober when we got married. <laughs> <laughs> I fail to believe that. It's the Steve McCoy Birthday Show. Who's next, Vicky? Uh, Steve, this is Maynard Jackson. Uh, since you're almost as old as I am, I wanted to wish you a happy birthday on Star 94. Steve McCoy. Happy birthday, fella. Well, happy birthday to Steve McCoy from... I don't, I don't want you to guess who this is because it's always embarrassing. Uh, it's Jay Thomas, the famous uh, television star from Love and War. <laughs> Monday night, CBS doing quite well. Yes, you are. I was at the uh, Airport Marriott with Vicky, and um, we got out of bed together. She sprained her knee and what? said, oh... <laughs> it's going to be Steve's birthday on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, let's get some ice on that knee, and let's put some ice on another part of me, and then let's sing happy birthday to Steve. Wait a minute. And so that's what we were doing. <laughs> we were in our birthday suits when she uh, thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, sure. And so, you know, I figured, you know, she was nice enough to treat me really great. As I, I just stopped overnight, uh -huh. gave her a call. Is that right? She came out to the Marriott, and uh, she was great. She's so easy, isn't she? <laughs> She's unbelievable. Hey. That's how I got to work with her. <laughs> Bigger. <laughs> that's why men like her. You don't like a hard gal. You know? that's, that's right. Hard gals end up drinking alone until three in the morning. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So how old are you? Uh, 38. All right. That's a way to lie about that age. Yeah. And you know what's good about it is you, you know, if we'd never seen, uh, like, Larry King, we wouldn't know that he's really this old fart. Because <laughs> your voice stays the same. That's right. And so you'll always sound, you know, young with a lot of hair. But <laughs> happy birthday. Is it true that Jerry Glanville called you? Yeah. That may be the last call he's making in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> the next call may be, like, in Ottawa. Oh, and Jay, before you go, you've got to tell Steve the story you told me about the injury you suffered, which is even funnier than my skiing accident. The operation I had where they put the uh, Achilles tendon of a cadaver in your knee, and I'm not kidding. 
I have the Achilles tendon of a cadaver in my knee, and I'm one of the few guys that started it out here. Uh, who is it, Lorenzo Lamas, the the, uh, the kickboxing uh, television star for that awful TV show that people like so much yeah. for no reason that his wife is in? Uh, wow. Renegade, he has had both of his knees done at my doctor's. I think he gets the operation. Uh, you know, she could, um, you know, start, uh, you know, play for Jerry Glanville. There you go. Well, I'm glad that I could wish you happy birthday. All right, Shay Thomas, thank you. Hey. We'll be right back with more of the Birthday Show on Star 94. Steve, this is Chris Curl from Channel 2. They tell me you have a birthday. You're not getting older. Hey, you were old last year. Thank you. Steve McCoy, it's Bobby Batista. I've probably been on the air as long as you have in this town. Or actually, you've probably been on longer. But I've been listening to you ever since I've been here. And I can remember when uh, you first got here. When I first got here, I guess about 11 years ago, I used to listen to you. I don't know what radio station you're on back then. Neither do I. But anyway, the one thing I remember is I used to love to trash my hair on the air. But I never held that against you. And I just want to know, I still listen to you now, and a happy birthday, old boy. And if you want Prince tickets, guess who it is? This person is blonde and very smart. This person knows Steve is a weenie. But today, our special birthday boy will see this person in a bikini. 741-9400 from Star 94. Okay, Vic keeps having me go in and out, in and out of the studio. It's 7.30, Star 94. A guest coming in here. I'm going to be blindfolded. We'll see. And presents to you. We've got Prince tickets and more to give away this morning. All on Star 94. Let's start with a look at traffic. Mike Oliver. Boy, it's been a fun flight all morning long. Nothing really to worry about. The Koi Birthday Show, Star 94. Well, we have a winner already, but I have to tell you, with the clue I gave, someone guessed Rod Stewart. Somebody else guessed Dr. Ruth. I promise you, Steve, it's none of those people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now i got to get out of the studio while you bring them in, right? Right. Yeah. And a chance to win Prince tickets all morning long. It's Steve McCoy's birthday. Happy birthday to you. It's Steve McCoy's birthday. We're going to have a good time. It's 738. Great day for a birthday or for anything. Going to be partly sunny with gusty winds today, a high of 65. Tonight's low around 43, and that's the temperature right now for our next guest. And we just gave away a pair of tickets to the sold-out Prince concert and automatically registered this person to win an $8,000 vacation for four, including round-trip airfare to Orlando, a four-night cruise, four nights at a Walt Disney Resort Hotel, unlimited admission to all the Disney attractions, and it's all from Minute Maid Premium Products and Star 94. This was the clue. Let me find it here. This person is blonde and smart. This person knows Steve as a weenie. But today, our special birthday boy will see this guest in a bikini. And can I try and guess? You're not peeking, are you? No. No. Okay. Are you ready? All right. All right. Can I open them? You can open your eyes now. Birthday surprise. Birthday surprise. Meet Vendela. <gasps> Thanks. A Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover. Do I get to keep you? <laughs> well, we can talk about it. <laughs> wow. Wow. What a surprise. Isn't that great? How did you get to be um, on the cover? Well, um, you know, this is my second time in Sports Illustrated, and I guess I worked really, really hard on it for about a year. And, um, you know, a lot of luck and also, you know, hard work. <laughs> I saw you on Entertainment Tonight. And uh, you said that for all the guys that and women that have the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition, that you necessarily w might not wear this suit because it might cause some bad tan line. Right. Although I love this suit. I'm, I'm crazy about it. I think it's really, really gorgeous. Um, probably on the beach, maybe I would wear a little less. I actually have more fabric in my tie than... <laughs> Than you well, have. actually, they've been calling this the pretzel for a while. <laughs> Do you get to keep the suits? No, I don't. But Darling Rio, the two designers who are doing this, have asked if I don't want some stuff, and I do, so they're going to send me some stuff. Well, give us a little history here. You're, you're in Atlanta. We appreciate you being here on the birthday show. This is pretty good, Vic. This is my Elton John. This is pretty good. We got Elton John for her birthday. I heard. I heard. That's pretty great. So, uh, <laughs> give us the history on you. Where are you from and, and all? Um, well, I'm Swedish. I'm born in Stockholm and I'm um, 26. I've been here living in the States for almost six years. And um, I have a contract with Elizabeth Arden since four years. 
And this is my second appearance now as Force Illustrated. And um, I'm and now I can claim you as a dependent on my taxes, too, I think. <laughs> right. I understand you're fluent in several languages. Could you say happy birthday to Steve in some other language? Oh, that'd be nice, yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Gratulere med dagen. Had an aram. That was Swedish and Norwegian. Hey, Steve, this is Don Farmer from Channel 2 Action News. <laughs> All I can say is, no matter how old you get, I'll be older. Happy birthday, Steve. Thanks a lot, Don. 746 Star 94. With today's best music, Patty Smythe is here. Back in uh, late January when it was Vicky's birthday, we tried to outdo each other on uh, our respective birthdays with guests. And... Uh... Elton John was a biggie for her, but this person that you have here in the studio... You got Vendela. You said you wanted the SI cover girl. You got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. She's here with us today. And being on the cover of Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition, Vendela, does this mean you get the big bucks? Um, I pretty much have gotten the big bucks already. I think this is more recognition. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, this issue is wonderful. I happened to finally be able to read it yesterday, and there's some real interesting stuff in there. It's actually a great story about Atlanta and the Olympics coming right. here and, and all that Billy Payne is doing, so we're pretty proud that it ended up in uh, that issue also. Yeah. Well, this has been, this is a great surprise. Uh, Sports Illustrated, you're just as beautiful as the photograph. You know, a lot of times you look at these women and think, are they really that beautiful? But you are even, even more. I suppose I can't talk you into, since it is my birthday, birthday spankings, huh? <laughs> Birthday spankings. It's a custom here. I don't know. I haven't that. heard about that before. I don't know. I like birthday presents better, I think. You've been waiting for a good spanking. Hi, Steve. This is Jill Becker with Noon Day. Having a wonderful time, but I wish you were here. Happy birthday, buddy. See you soon. Oh, thanks, Jill. It's three past eight. Happy birthday, Steve. My name is John Wickman. I'm really excited to see Prince. Your clue is she's a real grifter. No. Oh. All right, and this? Hello, Atlanta. This is Angelica Houston from Hollywood wishing Steve McCoy a happy birthday. Now, we caught up with her in L.A. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm sorry that we couldn't have her live this morning, but this is the letter she wrote. Dear Steve, I have a special request of you. I am in Hollywood filming The Addams Family 2, and I'd like you to join me here to be an extra on the set. <laughs> So, Star 94 is going to fly you out there to be an extra on The Addams Family 2. You're kidding. And you're going to get to meet Angelica Houston. You are kidding. No. Raul Julia. I thought you were joking like, we want you to be Thing. (laughs) 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 Or Nose. They could introduce the new cast member, Nose. Are you kidding? No, we're not kidding. In the movie? In the movie. I'd be in the movie? You're going to be in the movie. Wow. They needed some people that look kind of creepy and kooky and spooky, and we thought Steve is it. Wow. Cousin It. Yeah. (laughs) Cousin It. Well, I wonder if I'll get paid more than your 58 bucks you got for 90210. <laughs> wow, are you kidding? We're not kidding. Well, thanks. What a great birthday show. Very cool. Nice. One more, one more present. Oh, what, what, what? A very, very, very special monologue minute to close out the show. Oh. It's time for the... By his bugging eyes, trampled AOC chairman Billy Payne and ruined Mayor Maynard Jackson's favorite suit by sloshing an F.O. all over it. <laughs> Uh, Ted Turner made an announcement today to try and bolster his reputation as a philanthropist. He announced that the Braves mascot, Homer the Brave, will donate his head when he retires to house a family of homeless fans. <laughs> Tears came to Turner's eyes when he said, I can just see a happy family after years of homelessness. They hear a knock, and one of the little tykes yelling, Mom, someone is at the nose. <laughs> Morning radio personality Steve McCoy is celebrating his 38th birthday today. He is celebrating the day by being treated to celebrity calls, visits, and gifts provided and arranged by his co-host, Vicki Locke. I know most of you are thinking that it was really nice of me to agree to come by and wish Steve happy birthday, but let me tell you, I'm getting big bucks for this. No way I would be here just to say happy birthday to someone like Steve McCoy. So, happy birthday, Steve, and I better get my check, Vicky. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin Nealon from Saturday Night Live. When you look in. You got Taya Leone for me. Do you guys even remember that? No. Yeah, so I always liked Taya Leone, and, and yeah. one morning, I don't know how she was in early, early by you guys, and my phone rings at like 7 o'clock in the morning, and I answer the phone, and, and of course, you know, I've, I've learned through the course of time never to be, you know, tip my hand because I never know with you guys, especially you, Steve O. Yeah. Um, and so she goes, Mike? Yes, this is Taya Leone. I go, I love you. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> she started laughing, but yeah, that was. And you guys also oh. did uh, Walter Payton for me. God rest oh, his yeah, soul. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. Oh yeah, I'm 
almost forgot about that. Yeah, no. He was in the studio with us. Yeah, yeah live, which I'm thinking it had to be recorded because it was like 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. And and then you're like, no. And, you know, Vicky's like, here, talk to him. I'm like, holy cow, I'm talking yeah. to sweetness. Yeah. I love you, too. Yeah. He was a nice man, nice guy, great guy, mm-hmm. great football player, too. Not like Tom Brady. Ugh. <laughs> Let's uh, not talk about politics or the Super Bowl. I know. I'm still hurting over the Super Bowl. Oh, me too. Oh, God, Everybody yeah. Is. Gosh. I feel Falcons. bad. Falcons, gosh, I know. Bad for our guys. The racy, racy, race. All right, all right, all right. But the good news is I am available next year, and I will guarantee a win should they sign me. Oh, really? What yeah. position would you play, Mike? Uh, left out. Left out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good position, but me and our me and Arthur, I will I will dance with Arthur on the sideline. Yeah, Yeah. that'll be my job, or get dance lessons. Yeah, (laughs) maybe we'll dances with the stars can you know dancing with the stars with Arthur. That would be great. I'd watch that. Yeah, I would too. I've never watched the show, but I'd watch that. Are you kidding? He's got moves that hadn't even been invented yet. So it's special guest time here on the Steve and Vicky podcast. We've got a very special bud uh, from the past, Chris Van Meter, who's a veteran and has started a brand new veteran site on the web. And uh, he's hoping that uh, some Atlanta veterans will get interested in. If you've got a business and you're a veteran, you want to listen to this next uh, little piece with uh, Chris. Sounds really cool what you're doing. Just tell everybody that's listening about the website and how it's helping veterans. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, first of all, for having me on. It's so great to hear you guys and, and talk to you guys again. I've uh, been a fan for a long, long time. Uh, what we've started is something called the Veteran Business Guide. And what our premise is, is we are trying to create a marketing platform for veteran businesses to reach the average American consumer. Um, I had started a pressure washing service a couple of years ago, and I'm an Air Force veteran myself. And I advertise on my business cards and so forth. I'm a veteran. And uh, when people would hire me, they'd say, one of the reasons we hired you is because you were a veteran. Of course, I'd follow that up with, okay, well, cool. How do you find other veteran businesses? And quite honestly, there was not a real clean solution to find other, to find other veteran businesses. So me and my uh, business partner, who is in the Navy, we kind of put our heads together and decided to create this uh, website called the Veteran Business Guide. And we're located at veteranbusinessguide.com. And what, what, what started out, honestly, is we were just going to try to start as a small project, really started growing a lot of momentum because a lot of people do support. A lot of people want to hire veterans. Um, I think the studies will show that about 70% of Americans, if they had a choice between two companies, being everything equal, they would prefer to hire a veteran over a non-veteran contractor or service. And we list all kinds of services on our site. We have, you know, pressure washers. We have real estate. We have finance advisors. We have uh, roofers. So any type of business that is owned by a veteran can list with us. Now, we also have some very strict stipulations because we do want to hold this strictly to the veterans to list, and that is we will verify every single business owner as being a veteran plus being a 50% or more owner in their business. Um, it's, uh, and we also have... So you're policing it, so it's not like somebody can say, ooh, free advertising on this website. You're really going to make sure they're who they say they are. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we have very good guidelines in place. Last year, I attended a uh, program called Boots the Business, which is put on by the Small Business Administration, specifically for veteran entrepreneurs. And when I met with the people from Washington who were putting this thing on, one of the very first questions to me was, are you going to ensure that only veterans are on there? And I said, absolutely. And therefore, they completely endorse it and and are looking forward to us growing. Um, and, And I can add one more thing about our website is we are also the only website of this kind that already has our own phone app. So... You know, let's say 90% of us are always on the go now, and we have our smartphones. But you can go to, uh, what is it, Google Play, the App Store, or whatever Android calls their App Store. I'm not familiar with that. And type in Veteran Business Guide, and you'll see our logo and the app will pop up. And uh, um, Steve, I think I give you a copy of my business card. But, of course, anybody can go to veteranbusinessguide.com and see our logo. Right, right. 
You know, you talked about uh, verifying the businesses on YouTube, and I've been watching a few of these videos from time to time where guys that pretend to be former vets of being veterans and all, because I do notice I found out about a site. I forget what it's called. Maybe you know. Stolen Valor. Huh? Stolen Valor. That's it. And it's amazing that guys do this. They walk around with medals on their chest. They get some uniform from a, you know, the garage sale or something, and they buy it. Yep. And then they go around pretending to be a Marine or something just to pick up women or to act well, or, maybe, or maybe to get money. Yeah, Dude. not only to pick up women, which is one thing, or women can wear it to pick up men. Um, they, they wear it to get the discounts because so many great organizations do, you know, give veteran discounts to – Vets and, and if somebody walks in the store, let's say Home Depot. Home Depot has a great program where they give ten percent to a better. Well, if you walk in in uniform, the cashier is not going to turn around and say, "Okay, show me your ID." Right, right. So boom, you know, there's a there's a ten percent that you know this person didn't necessarily. I don't I don't want to say he didn't earn, but he didn't earn it. Right. Because he didn't serve the time, you know, in the service. But a lot of the videos are guys that come up and challenge them, you know, that were in the yep. service. And they get into fights or something. They, and rightly so. Yeah, they should. They should. Absolutely. <laughs> so I mentioned that only to, to mention that it's important that you substantiate that the guys do uh, have a veteran business, I think. Oh, yes, sir. And, and, it, and it's very, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I, I, I'm now getting to where I talk to a ton of business owners, which I, I really enjoy. And it, it's funny how quickly we can start talking about the days that we spent in service. And it doesn't matter what branch of service we were in, whether we were... Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or the Coast Guard, there, there's a common language and a com- common undertone to every conversation that we have that we don't have to sit there and say, okay, are you really this guy? But like you said, Steve, you can go back and watch these videos or you can, if somebody talks to you, you can pick up right away, okay, this guy isn't necessarily what he's representing. Well, this is great what you're doing. So, and, and it's not just odd jobs. You can get your house financed. You can get maybe oh. your a new roof on an existing home, and uh, just any almost absolutely. anything. Absolutely, and, and you know we're growing and expanding every day, and adding you know whatever veteran-owned business that wants to come and list with us, we can add their category. You know. It's funny, we sat down, I was at a, a veteran entrepreneurial meeting last night at a uh, place up in Woodstock, a great a great restaurant. Can I say the restaurant name? Sure. It's better known. So uh, it's called Semper Fi. Huh. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great it, it I think it got voted as the best hamburger in Woodstock in December. Huh. Um, so it's a great little place. Um, but, you know, we were up there and I was talking to these other veterans and, and there's a pest control service that this guy is starting to franchise out. And, and that's the other thing. Just because you don't own the, let, let's, let's take, for example, um, home, I said Home Depot earlier. We know Home Depot isn't a franchise. But let's say Home Depot was to start giving out franchise licenses. If you owned a particular location, you could list with us. Does that make sense? Yeah. You don't have to own the whole corporate. Sure. But if you're a franchisee and you, you know, are, are official and you own that location, you can list with us. Um, but going back to what Vicky said, the pest control service came up and, and we were talking about it and we didn't have pest control in our lower categories to pick the business. And we can absolutely add any category that business wants to list themselves at. Okay, great. Now, also, if there's somebody listening that has a business that's a veteran, how could they get a hold of you, Chris? Well, they, of course, can contact me directly. My cell phone is uh, 770-617-1099. Uh, they can go to veteranbusinessguide.com, and we have a, a direct link to where somebody can email us. Um, we also, you can also email info at veteranbusinessguide.com. And, and, Steve, in honor of being on your program, I'm offering full featured listings to any veteran who's listening to this program. All they have to do is when they go to do their checkout, they're going to put in the name Steve McCoy, and they will get a 100% full featured uh, listing with us. Aren't you oh, nice? Great. That's wonderful. So free Thank listing, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Full, full, full free featured. And, and if I can comment real quick on what our featured listings uh, also possesses, you can integrate all of our, um, all of your social media, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your. Facebook or Twitter can be right there on your business page on our site. 
and people can go through it while they're on our site. They don't necessarily, you know how sometimes you go to a website and you go, okay, I want to look at this, this person's Facebook, and they'll, and they'll take you off the site into Facebook. Well, our software is so programmed that you could look at their Facebook and go all through it while you're still on our site without having to go to another location. Mm. One more time before we let you go, what's the website? Yes, ma'am, thank you. It's veteranbusinessguide.com. And, of course, Veteran Business Guide on the App Store. And uh, my, you can contact me at info at veteranbusinessguide.com or chris at veteranbusinessguide.com. Awesome. Good deal. Thank you, Chris, very much. Chris Van Meter, good friend of the show. Hey, thank you all very much, and I hope you guys have a great day. Hey, great fun. Thanks for having uh, should me. Should we sing happy birthday to Lee? Right. No? Happy no. birthday. We're the, oh, the bear's dead. The bear's dead. The bear's dead. I put an end to that bear. Thanks a lot. I'll clean up later. All right. Miss you, Tom. On the Steve and Vicky podcast. Thanks very much. See you next time. Bye. See you. This has been a Filmways presentation, darling.